What is up, everyone? Today, we are diving deeper into that character creator we got last week in the live stream. I was meaning to get this video out earlier, but you know, life and such. So let's dive right into it. Just something to remember, this is the Alpha 2 character creator. It's their first pass on it. It's far from complete, far from all of the customization options you will have, and the UI is all placeholder, but it gives you a really good idea on what to expect from it in the long run. And it's probably one of the cooler character creators I've seen, even in its very early state. The character creator you are seeing now is built completely from scratch by Intrepid. It's not using Unreal 5's creator at all, as a lot of people seem to think that that is what Intrepid has done. Steven even took to Reddit to reconfirm that this is Intrepid built. This system has come so far from Alpha 1, which was just picking minimal presets to get you in the game, which a lot of people seem to not believe me when I said that it would change as we get later into the alphas and betas, but here's your proof. So taking a look at it, from the start, you can see there are four tabs on the top. Origins, which is your race selection, and we currently get to see the Vec Orcs and the Kalar Humans. You then have the Appearance tab, which obviously changes the appearance of your characters in a more traditional fashion with sliders and such. Then you have Blend, which is pretty cool for those who don't want to put that much time into creating a character. You can select multiple of presets that you like and go in and blend their features together, kind of creating a combination of them. And then you have the Sculpt option, which is by far one of the coolest things I've ever seen in a character creator, allowing you to go in and resize individual parts of the body by clicking and dragon. When you go in to pick your race, the race will burn in or out of the creator. That is how death works in Ashes of Creation, and when you die, your body turns to ash, which kind of goes with the whole Phoenix vibe of the game, dying, turning to ash, and being reborn. In appearance, you have body options, and within that, body presets. They give you a bunch of presets to choose from to get that rough idea of how you want to make your character. From the preset, you can go in and further customize that preset with all the various sliders and such, as the body type allowing you to change the height, weight, chest, crotch, and bottom, because who doesn't want to have a crotch slider as you run around through Vera? All of these things can be altered within reason, making your character fatter, skinnier, taller, shorter, but sticking within the Ashes lore in a sense. You won't be able to create wild monstrosities as a human, as each race only has customization options within its established lore, it seems, so you can't just go and give your human some ears. Other body customizations you can customize is the skin, allowing you to add wrinkles to age your character, along with changing the base skin color, along with altering the hue and pigmentations of that skin color you chose. Again, these probably aren't all the final options and are just meant to give you an idea as we head into Alpha 2. We then have the head customization, which gives you some face presets, then hair customization, allowing you to change the length, contrast, gradient, fill color, which is the base color of your hair, accent color being the tips of your hair, and all of the color at the same time, if you just want one solid color across the board. A cool feature here is instead of just presets that you can add, you can click and drag the sliders to increase or decrease the length of your hair. You aren't just picking close to the length you want, you can literally slide the dial to get that exact length of hair that you choose, giving you more options to make that character of your dreams. Moving into the beard, which is the most important part of any character creator, especially for dwarves, you have similar features as to hair as you can click and drag the length. You can do this with individual parts of the beard as well, including the chin, the cheeks, and the lips, giving yourself that option to make a fabulous mustache. You can also change the contrast gradient and fill color of the beard as well. With the face, you can customize the eyes, including the iris and eye color, along with potentially adding the feature to customize each eye individually down the road. For facial features, you can customize the brows, the ears, the eyes, the cheeks, and the mouth, along with further customizing these through the sculpting system, which we'll talk about in a minute. Within the detail panels, you can change your nail color, which includes your toes, and tattoos. Tattoos are actually pretty cool in this, with the fact that you can click and drag and place that tattoo anywhere you want on your character, including the face, and then you can resize that tattoo along with rotating it and changing the color to get it just in the right spot. So you could place a small tattoo on your shoulder or turn that same tattoo into a larger one and make it more of an arm sleeve for your character. It's kind of cool as you drag it on your arms and your legs, the tattoos seem to wrap around the arms, so it really would allow you to make a tattoo sleeve if you wanted to. You could even place them over your face, like I said, and the same works for body scars, allowing you to place and resize them. The only real difference is body scars have a bit more 
detail to them to look more realistic. As tattoos don't really have a lot of detail, it's just the image you want with the color. Jumping into my favorite feature though, being sculpting. Every white panel you see on your character right now on the video can be sculpted. And this works by clicking on that area you want to sculpt, then you will see multiple dots pop up, which can then be clicked on and dragged into the shape, size, position, whatever it is you may be altering, allowing you to get even closer to your vision of how you want your perfect character to look. Because you will be spending a long ass time with this character, so he might as well look perfect for you. Again, all of this is within standards though, you can't drag the nose so it's pointed all the way up to your forehead or anything like that. And there will be a control Z option to undo those mistakes you may have made while sculpting. We then have blending, which again is just taking a bunch of presets, putting them together and being able to blend those features of those presets together, which is a lot quicker for those of you who don't care as much about how your character looks, still allowing you to make a pretty cool looking guy in a shorter amount of time. But for those who want to dive deep into this, but don't want to take away from launch, you will be in luck because this character creator will be available before launch. So players will have plenty of time to get that perfect character down. This system will also be used to customize NPCs CCs you may have hired for your freehold, along with having similar functions within the animal husbandry system, probably not the full extent as players because those animals are stuck in much stricter parameters, so you're not going to be able to fully change the color or the hairstyle probably because they still want these breeds to be intertwined and look a specific way in a sense. Anyways, what are your thoughts on this character creator? Let me know in the comments down below and if you're new to Ashes at all and have yet to make an account, feel free to use my referral link in the description below to jump in on the forums or maybe buy some cosmetic bundles for your character. Otherwise, be sure to click that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up, turn on the bell for notifications, and stay tuned for a lot more to come.